once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ her little child. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all, and his shelter was a stable, and his cradle was a stall. With the poor and mean and lowly lived on earth a Saviour holy. Welcome to Church in the Forest on this holy night. We have been listening to glorious music but tonight is not a concert. Tonight we are a community gathered in sacred time. And especially on Christmas Eve, we experience sacred time. All of God's blessings and, and beauty and abundance are poured into this baby, Jesus Christ, born on Christmas Day. So this evening we are going to recreate sacred time We'll do that through our prayers and holy words, through the heartfelt music of violin and guitar, piano and horn, and our gifted singers. And you as well are an important part of creating sacred time. Will you sing along with us tonight? And will you light your candles at home? First, we're gonna light those Advent candles, and then of course, we will light that final Christmas candle as we sing Silent Night. So first, our Advent candles, would you light along with us? We light all of our candles this evening. The candle of hope, of love, of joy, of peace. And tonight we light our Christ candle. Let's pray together. Lord, we pray that these candles may begin to illumine your presence in our lives. Show us through their light your hope, your love, your joy, and peace. Especially show us your Son, Jesus Christ. And would you bless all of these deeply familiar readings and songs of tonight? that they may carry fresh truths to our hearts. Would you reveal new dimensions of Jesus Christ in these readings and songs? And would you right now bring new understandings to that familiar prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'll be reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 9, verses 2 and verses six and seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. 
For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the Word of our Lord. Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38 Christ's birth announced to Mary from the New King James Version Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David the virgin's name was Mary and having come in the angel said to her Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, 
has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Shepherds, God and angels. 
Reading from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room available for them in the inn. The word of the Lord. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
We continue the Christmas story as Luke records it for us in the second chapter, reading verses 8 through 15. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, it's finally Christmas Eve. In just a few minutes, we will sing that song, Silent Night, and we will light those Christmas candles. You know, when we're sitting together here in this chapel, this moment is, is so exquisite, so beautiful. Don't you almost just ache, ache? A sublime light begins to grow in our, our darkened chapel as that that candle flame is passed from person to person. The singing is full of tenderness and yearning, and the light and the music and our, our hearts seem to reach beyond this ceiling to heaven. We don't want that moment to end. In fact, over the years, Melinda has actually devised a way to extend that moment when we sing Silent Night and then sleep in heavenly peace, she's devised ways for us to elongate that moment. The congregation now hums, our soloists sing a descant line, and our instrumentalists improvise all to keep that moment from ending. Sleep in heavenly peace. That moment of sublime and soulful intensity is what theologians call kairos time, kairos time. Kairos is time that actually disappears. The clock becomes irrelevant and our schedules and our tasks just fall away. We don't need to accomplish anything. We just need to be, as Charles Wesley wrote, lost in wonder love 
and praise. That's Kairos time. We are intensely alive, aware, and blessed. So we don't want it to end. But our Christmas Eve story from the Gospel of Luke begins in a different sort of time, Kronos time. Kronos time is chronological time, years and days and hours. In Kronos time, life is measured out in mathematical units that actually serve power and money and fear. And you can hear those notes in Luke's opening words, which were read by Mary Wiltsey. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus to register all the empire for taxes. Everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph also went up to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was of the family line of David, he went to be registered with Mary, who was expecting a child. Do you hear the fear in these lines? Register. Register or else. And do you hear the references to money, taxes, taxes to be collected? And there's impersonal power in these lines. Masses of people are being ordered around without any regard to their personal plight. Even a poor girl, 40 weeks pregnant. Fear, money, impersonal power. That is pure chronos. But into those days of chronos, Kairos time breaks in. Luke intentionally structures his story to lead first with chronos, but then he counters it with kairos. And Ken read that, that second kairos section. It describes humble shepherds who who know and love their sheep. The heavens are opening up in glory, a message from God, do not fear. And then this, this vision of, of utter joy. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God. That is pure Kairos. Kairos time counters Kronos time. Kairos is when we sense that we are completely beloved, just as we are. That we are sustained by a gracious reality that transcends all the world's strife. Here we realize in astonishment that God loves the world, God so loves the world, that he sends us this, this teacher, this savior, Jesus Christ. That is Kairos time. We don't want it to end. Christmas Eve is a Kairos moment that only occurs once a year. But for our Jewish brothers and sisters, Kairos moments aren't just an annual thing. They happen every week with the celebration of their Sabbath. In conservative forms of Judaism, its members meditate on scripture, sing and feast and rest. Some even dance on the Sabbath, these, these wonderful, exuberant circle dances. And Jews make a special effort to extend the Sabbath. They don't want that night to end. Hasidim, postpone the departure of the Sabbath by prolonging the evening meal and festivities way into the night. And Kabbalists push the ending of the Sabbath in a very special way. They sing the last word of the last song of Sabbath as long as their breath will allow. That is the beauty of Kairos time. We don't want it to end. J.R.R. Tolkien wrote, all we have to decide 
is what to do with the time that is given us. What will we do with our time? Will we give all of our time to Kronos, to its, its fears, its focus on money, its power, its, its deadening, impersonal spirit? Or will we give time to Kairos, alive, blessed, aware, lost in wonder, love, and praise? Will we open our time to the presence of God more than once a year? And will we open our eyes to the presence of God with us every day in Jesus Christ? And will we hold on, hold on to that moment as long as we can? We're now facing an extended lockdown. And for many, time hangs heavy. Restaurants closed, trips canceled, meetings pushed to Zoom movies, <laughs> to TV sets, and many are rightfully worried about jobs and paychecks and bills. Coronavirus time for many is Kronos time. But Kronos will not give us life. Kronos will not grow our souls if we give all of our hours to Kronos, we will not endure this lockdown. Kronos will measure out our lives as, as weeks stuck inside, wages lost, businesses closed, hospital beds filled, deaths recorded. The coronavirus and Kronos time will crush our humanity and our spirits. You know, we may survive this biological pandemic, but will we survive our spiritual pandemic? In order for us to, to triumph over this virus, we need Kairos time. We need Kairos moments of, of celebration, of sacred beauty, of worship. We need Kairos time to face ourselves and to confess our sins and to change and grow. We especially need Kairos time to learn to trust in God, to trust in God's daily bread. Soon we'll have to end this beautiful worship time and blow out our candles and go back to Kronos time. There might be a roast in the oven that's going to burn if you don't watch the clock. We can't live in Kairos all the time. But to rephrase Mr. Tolkien, the question isn't just what will we do with our time, but what kind of time will we do? Kronos time or Kairos time? So in the days ahead, why don't you pick up your Christmas candle and light it again? Feel God draw near to you, God in Jesus Christ. Relive the, the wonder and the beauty of this night. Be in Kairos time. And then, don't let it end. Stretch this moment. Stretch this moment past yourself. Share your Kairos heart with your neighbor on the street or the delivery person at your door, the clerk at the store, the stranger in the line. Make that moment go on and on. Push it past midnight. Push it into tomorrow, into next week next year. Let's hold that last word of tonight's last song as long as our breath will allow sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep 
in heavenly peace. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word of the Lord. And God bless all of you and Merry Christmas. We'll now sing together Silent Night. May we experience that exquisite, beautiful silence as we light our final Christmas candle.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and forevermore, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thank you. 